Hello then, good afternoon everyone. Um, this is the Friday lunchtime lecture and it's the first of a part of a series that we're doing over the next few weeks. It will be the same presentation each time, it's not going to change each time unless we get feedback that you'd like to know a little bit different or a little bit more. So, um, my name is Cindy Storer and I'm currently acting into the Deputy Director of Nursing, Midwifery and AHPs. And this lunchtime lecture is to start to prepare you for the forthcoming CQC inspection. So, as a trust, our vision is to be the safest trust in England outstanding in all we do. And one of the regulators that judges on that is the CQC. So, we're just going to start by playing a little video to warm us into what the CQC is all about. Everyone will need to be cared for at some point in their life. When we are born, if we're ill, injured or suffer from a mental health issue. When we need a dentist, when we are old or frail, and even when we die. This is true for all of us. Everyone we know, everyone we love. And when we need that care, we want it to be right. We want to feel safe, we want staff to be caring, and we want care that meets our needs. The reason the Care Quality Commission exists is to make sure health and social care services provide this type of care. That means hospitals, GPs, dentists, care homes, care provided in the home, mental health services and some other services as well. Our job is to monitor and inspect them and judge how well they're doing. We're independent, we're honest and we're on the side of the people who use care services. People like you. Here's how it works. We have three top experts who are our chief inspectors of hospitals, adult social care and general practice. They lead expert inspection teams that include doctors, nurses, GPs and social workers and members of the public. People who help us to understand what it's like to be cared for in the service we're inspecting. We call them experts by experience. During inspections, our chief inspectors and their teams will ask five main questions. Is this care safe? For example, is it clean and are infection rates low? Is this care effective? For example, how good are they at making people better or making sure their quality of life is the best it can be? Is it caring? Are the staff compassionate and do they treat people as human beings? Is this organisation well led? Do the staff have direction and purpose and are they running the service properly? Is the organisation responsive to people's needs? Is it listening to complaints and comments and acting on them? How long do people have to wait and can people get appointments when they need them? Before we inspect, we listen to what people have to say about their local services and to the staff who work in them. It's one of the most important things that we do. It adds to the information we collect and analyse all the time to help us do our job. We need you to tell us about your care, good or bad. Every comment or complaint that we hear about builds up a better picture of what is going on. How and when we follow up depends on how serious the comments are and what we know about the quality of care at each service. We don't resolve individual complaints, but everything that you tell us helps us decide when, where and what to inspect. It is vital to our work. We also use all of this information, plus evidence from our inspections, to publish reports and ratings for each service. These help you to understand how good the care is, if it needs to improve, or if we're taking action of some kind. In extreme cases, we can stop a service from providing care. Our reports can also help the people providing care to improve, and other organisations that we work with to do their jobs. And importantly, they can help you to choose between services. It's an independent, open judgment that you can trust. If we, the Care Quality Commission, say that a care service is good, it means we would be happy to use it, and we'd be happy for the people we love to use it too. But we don't stop there. Our judgments and findings go to the care providers, other regulatory organisations and key partners to make sure that health and social care services provide safe, high-quality and compassionate care that all of us deserve. 
you can help us to improve the way we do our job by getting involved. We talk to the public, to people who use different types of services, care professionals, people that provide care, and other organisations all the time. This is our work. We're passionate about what we do, and we're determined to make sure that whenever and wherever you receive care, you are safe, well cared for, and that you get the right care for you. <coughs> if you would like more information, please visit our website or contact us by email, phone or Twitter. So it's just a little bit of an introduction about what the CQC's role is. And that the way that they work, and they do publish this timeline on their website, is that when we know that an inspection is coming, the first we'll hear about it is when they ask us for provided information. So that request came through at the end of May, um, when we submitted 85 spreadsheet pages and 140 documents within the space of two weeks, as we were asked. Um, and then what happened was the CQC got in touch and said, we'd like to hold focus groups in your trust. So they suggested some dates and then we arranged all of the focus groups um, and we'll be announcing those dates today and they'll be publisher, published um, for you all to attend. The CQC have asked us to set the focus groups in bands of staff, so it was their um, suggestion, it wasn't how we want to do it and we, um, we would encourage you all to attend the focus group for your grade because they really don't like it when we have senior people at a more junior staff focus group. So we've got the dates for the focus groups, um, which will go out in an all staff email, it'll go out in buzz because they are open to all staff and there'll be no management or senior people there so staff can talk freely. So there'll be one for bands four and below, there'll be one for bands five to six, one for band seven, midwives, consultants, junior doctors and staff and associate specialists. So for DRI and MEX, we're going to hold that in the QI hub, which is on the southeast corridor next to the chief exec's office, and it'll be live streamed to the boardroom at Bassett Law. So the CQC facilitator will hold that session, and it's to discuss with those grades of staff in individual focus groups, and they'll ask about the trust, they'll ask about what it feels to work here, and they'll want the feedback from you about what it feels like. So we know that we've submitted the provider request and we know that the CQC wanted to do the focus groups. So from this timeline, it sort of made us think that we know they're doing a well-led inspection in October, they're probably going to be in around the September time. And because the CQC, um, it's quite a big inspection, it's a lot of energy, we want to be as prepared as possible. So it isn't about putting on a show for CQC, but it's about helping everybody understand what the role is so that you feel prepared as possible. So the current trust rating is requires improvement and our ambition overall is to get to outstanding in the next five years. So we know that they could inspect up to four core services and this will be unannounced. So it could be emergency care, could be medicine, surgery, paediatrics, maternity, it could be end of life care, critical care, diagnostics and imaging. We don't know at this stage. So we've been asking you, what do you think? What do you need to know? And of, of those that have completed the survey, which went out on social media, it's gone out in Buzz as well, 60% of our staff feel CQC ready, which is a good start. But from that, we felt that you about to need to know a little bit more and get a little bit more prepared. So comms are doing an outstanding job. They're sending out updates in Buzz on the social media groups. And we've printed a booklet that you can, um, it's actually, it's a little bit damp still, it's fresh from the printers, but you can take that back to your areas. So it just might help reassure people what the CQC is about. Um, and then we'll do the Friday lunchtime lectures so we can give you the information that we know but it gives you opportunity to ask questions back as well and we'll build that repository on the hive. So as it said in the video, the purpose and role of the CQC is to register, monitor, inspect and regulate services. They do publish what they find and they also do a thematic analysis to try and improve care and make um, suggestions for other NHS trusts as well. Part of the CQC role is also able to make sure that people who have director level responsibility meet the fit and proper person um, CQC regulations. What they don't do is investigate individual complaints made about the trust. Patients and families can go to CQC with issues, but the CQC will pass it back to us. It just adds to their intelligence. So the booklet that you've all got then that we've printed in hard copy is also available electronically as well. 
Um, so you can, if you want to take that back to your area or take some to share to your staff, hopefully it'll make people feel a little bit reassured or give you a bit more information about what is um, coming. Um, so the five questions the inspectors will look for are the five CQC domains. So is this trust safe? Is it effective? Is it caring? Is it responsive? And is it well led? But these are really headlines to key lines of inquiry. So we want to try and talk you through some of this now. So you might have a bit more understanding about what those different domains are. So when we talk about safe, what we're talking about is safeguarding and protecting patients from abuse. Do we manage risks? Do we give safe care and treatment? Do we have effective medicines management? What's our track record? And how do we learn when things go wrong? So you will notice a year ago, we started the Sharing How We Care newsletter, which is sent to all staff in the trust. We haven't picked clinical staff. We haven't picked senior staff. It's shared with everybody. It's shared with our governors. It's shared with our commissioners. And it's also shared with CQC. Because we felt quite strongly that if we want to have good clinical governance and we want to be the safest trust in England, then we have to share what the issues and the challenges are with everybody and what we're doing to try and improve it. Improve it. So the 12th month edition is out today and it has all been sent out. There's hard copies up there and Mary's got one on the iPad if anyone wants to look at it digitally. And that's also complemented by an annual conference. So we held our second conference this year with James Titcomb, who was our keynote speaker. We had some really positive feedback from everybody who attended and we're now planning next year's conference, um, which will be at the Hilton on the 2nd of April. So we are now going to be doing some comms to say save the date and what we can do with that is build in the new patient safety strategy. Um, so there'll be representation from all the divisions to build that programme this time so it makes it what you need for your areas and makes it meaningful for you. So that's some of the work that we've been doing to share learning and it's not because CQC are coming, it's because we think it's the right thing to do. If we want to be the safest trust in England, we have to share all of that and be absolutely transparent about what the issues are with everybody. So the other thing that we're doing is trying to help bring our patients with us as well. So in response to their feedback and in response to some of the safety issues, we produced the new bedside information book that's gone out to all the inpatient areas. And it's got information that patients and families frequently ask pals, but also some of the patient safety information is more about how patients can help us keep themselves safe. The new welcome boards are coming outside the wards now. We've nearly signed off the design for the adult areas, but again, it's responding to feedback from patients and families, how we're going to improve, how do we make things better. And then in the space of a week, we've also turned around the bedside information boards because thinking about the person-centred elements of what patients want, so they're now being ordered as well. But using digital transformation, you should have all heard about the new hospital app programme that's come in because we want to move with the times and having observations available electronically will again help make our patients safer. So lots of really positive work going on in the trust. Um, so here's some pictures of the new bedside um, board, the new welcome boards outside the wards and then the bedside information available for patients. So under effective then, what this means is do we have evidence that we assess needs and do we deliver evidence-based treatment? Do we monitor outcomes and compare ourselves with similar services? Of our staff skills and knowledge, do we do all access the training that's available for you? And how do staff teams and services work together? How do we support people to live healthier lives and do we consent to care and treatment? So you will have seen the quit campaign that we launched on the World No Tobacco Day on 31st. And we know, um, we know that patients in this area have got higher incidence of smoking, but we also know that smoking affects lots of systems in the body. It's not just about the heart and lungs. It can have really serious damage to patients. And in South Yorkshire and Bassett Law, we do have really high rates of patients who smoke. So the quit campaign really is a South Yorkshire and Bassett Law initiative to try and capture hospital patients um, and support them in their role in quitting smoking because the evidence that we've had from London and Canada is that this is a captive group of audiences and there is some evidence in that. So this is about staff having brief conversations with patients on the ward, having CO monitors to be able to level, uh, monitor levels, offering, offering nicotine replacement therapy and referral to smoking cessation services. It isn't about just the smoke-free site, it's more about helping our patients to live those healthier lives. So under this domain as well, we've also got the safeguarding work. 
So some work that you'll start to see more, a bit more um, prominent is the Mental Capacity Act. And do you feel confident with that? Do you understand how to assess someone from their capacity? And do you understand the five principles of the Mental Capacity Act? So although there's lots of training going on, it's things like this that when the CQC come in, they'll be asking staff if they understand. So under caring then, though this is actually a domain in itself, and they'll be looking for evidence of, are staff kind? Do they respect patients? Do they show compassion? Do they involve people in decisions about their care, privacy, dignity, and is the care person-centred? So some of the work that you will have seen this, that we responded to patient feedback, is the new visiting times. So we asked patients what they wanted, and what they wanted was more access to their visitor at a time that suited them. The meal times matters, so for some of our relatives, they wanted to be part of that meal service, they wanted to be able to come in and make sure their loved ones had something to eat or drink, social dining spaces, and making that meal time the best medicine the patient can have. We've seen further expansion of butterfly volunteers for patients at end of life, the Sleep Helps Healing campaign, and the therapy pets, as well as that care and compassion that we hear about from patients every single day. So a little bit about our therapy pets, for those who haven't seen it in action. Um, the BBC came in to film us. Well, like, you, you relax when you've got a dog or a cat. And you stroke a cat. It gives so much to your heart it Makes a big difference. Gorgeous Gussie. I'll get keys. I hope to keep a lot of you. Yeah, if Ted wants to come every day, I've got no problem with that. <laughs> you, 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 you relapse. Oh, she makes me feel wonderful. Yeah. I love what you know. This is happening in your trust where you work. So some of the work that you've seen, it's not putting on a show for the CQC, it's because our staff feel so passionately they want to make things better, more person-centred and caring. We've now seen the therapy pets visit critical care areas and children's wards for those patients who will benefit from it. So under responsive then, what this means is, is there evidence that our care is person-centred? Do we offer every single patient that comes into the trust on every single pathway the same, or do we ask the patient what matters to you? Do we take into account the different needs of people? Do we provide time and access to care and treatment? And do we respond to concerns and complaints? So we have shared previously this infographic that's tried to pull together a year's worth of patient feedback so that it makes it a little bit more obvious about what patients are telling us so you understand why some of the changes that happened or some of the initiatives you've seen have been in that direct response to what an awful lot of people are saying. For the end of life survey that was done, the results were really, really positive and did reflect the massive change in investment that we've put into that service across both sites to make sure those patients at end of life have received that seven day service to improve that care. But also it, comes, it covers performance. So the four hour access standard and the CQC will be asking people in lots of areas, do you see this as an A&E target or is it a whole trust target? And this is about evidence in how we all work together. So for those who have inpatient responsibility, you will know that we do the ops conference four times a day and we work together to pull those patients out of A&E and increase that flow. We have cancer targets, we have referral to treatment targets and we have a role in HSMR. Um, target to try and keep that mortality down for our patients and if it does go up then we know we've got a problem and we can respond to it quickly. The C diff rates again at 15 for the month end um, and these are ever-changing targets that the NHS improvement set us so where we used to have C diff rates that were just hospital associated hospital acquired now we're also accountable for patients who may develop C diff in the community who've been in our hospitals in the last month before that. 650 days without an MRSA bacteremia, and again, things like appraisal rates, statutory and essential Terrell training, sickness and absence rates, are all things that the CQC will look at to see has this organisation got a, a good grip of it all. So under well-led, what this is talking about is a leadership capacity, 
And you all, as members of staff in this trust, have leadership capacity. What's the culture like in the organisation? What's the vision and strategy? What's the governance and management like? Do we manage risk and performance? And do we manage information properly? So our staff survey results for last year has shown that um, we're sort of in the middle of where we are in the overall NHS. What it did reflect is that staff are struggling and staff are finding it challenging with the increased activity against the demand and what we can provide. However, acknowledging all of that and acknowledging how hard it is and how hard everyone's working year on year, what the staff survey also showed was that staff are reporting improvements. They're reporting a higher motivation, they're reporting job satisfaction, and they're showing that they feel valued in this organisation, which is really positive. So these are our breakthrough objectives that have been set, and you should have part of the appraisal season had these and um, be aware of what they are. And it is about us working towards safer care for patients so that when the CQC come in, they recognise the work that we have all done. The other things, so the, some of the performance data and the quality stuff that we've shared, the staff brief, which is on every single month, and it's the Thursday after Board of Directors, talks through all of this with you. So anyone's welcome to attend the staff brief. They're quite open and it's on, there's an exec on all the three sites. And if you haven't been to one before, do feel welcome to attend all of those. Um, Chief Exec's doing blogs, he's doing open forums. So there is that connection between the executive team and the staff on the ground. We've also got our quality improvement team. So if you're struggling to try and make an improvement in that area or you think that you've got an idea, they are there to help you with some of these improvements. And we're seeing some of this now because we know we've got workforce challenges. We know that we've got more people coming through to the doors ever and ever. So some of the innovative, innovative ways that we're trying to um, address the workforce challenges, events like We Care Into the Future, did you all hear about this? So this was at the Dome and it had 250 professions showcased to more than 8,000 year eight children to try and plant the seed early that a career in the NHS could be for them. So these sorts of innovations are showing that we're thinking way into the future about some of the challenges that we've got now and we'll have again. So strategic objectives. And the message really is don't put on a show, but be proud to work here. Any questions? Have we got any questions at Montague? Any questions from Bassett Law? Any questions from Doncaster? <laughs> <laughs> 